Christmas, go to Meet Me family, go to Merry Christmas, all of our family, all of our friends all over the world. Merry Christmas, daughter, Larray. Merry Christmas to all of our viewers and listeners. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you today. We greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. The songwriter said, ooh, child, things are going to get better. Ooh, child, things are going to get easier. You need to call your neighbor, your friend, your family members and say, ooh, child, things are going to get easier better. Ooh, child, things are going to get easier. A lot of people are hurting. A lot of people are going through difficulties, but we serve the living God, amen, who loves you, who cares about you, is concerned about you, and he promised never to leave us alone, never to leave us alone. So we welcome you at the uh, Back to Basics Ministries online church where we preach Christ Jesus, born in a manger of the Virgin Mary, crucified on Calvary, buried in Joseph's tomb, rose again from the dead. Three days later, he ascended into heaven where he sits at the right hand of the throne of God and he makes intercession for all of us. And he loves us so much that he promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, it is expedient that I go away, but I will send the comforter. He will guide you into all truth. So we welcome the comforter, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We thank you that you live inside of every believer. Father God, we thank you that you love us so much that you choose to live inside of us. And so we're grateful. We thank you that you're with us always. You will never leave us nor forsake us. The world may reject us. The world may kick us to the curb, but God, you are always here with us. And so we thank you, Father. And we thank you for all the people you have online with us live today. And we thank you for those who will watch the video. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you'll stretch forth your mighty hand upon the whole world throughout this nation and every nation. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you will bless supernaturally and abundantly, just like you know that you can do. We pray that you'll heal the sick, that you'll deliver, and that you will save souls today. And we bless you, Father, and we honor you and we release this service unto you. We say, rise up, Holy Spirit, rise up in us like rivers of living water and help us to get into your flow. We humble ourselves before you. We submit our will and our plans and our agenda to you, Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, touch people today, wherever they are. Touch our friends and family in Chester, Pennsylvania. Praise God, we thank you, Lord. Touch our friends and family in Kenya and Ghana, Botswana, Jamaica, Paris, France. Touch John and Emily Hughes in Paris, France. Remember your people all over the world. We thank you, Father. We bless you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. I see in the chat room window. Good morning, Dad. And I say good morning to my firstborn, Lorraine. What a blessing she is. And your brother and sister are blessings too. What a blessing to have children who love you and children who love the Lord and are seeking the Lord with all their hearts. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you the importance of leading your family to the Lord. Don't leave this world, ladies and gentlemen, with your family in doubt as to their salvation. Make every effort while there's breath in your body to share with your family the love of Jesus Christ. Not only teach them about Jesus, but live Jesus before them. And so I thank you and I thank you and I bless you, Father God. And I thank all of you who love the Lord 
And I thank those of you who are listening, and this may be your first time, you may not be saved, but I'm believing God today that this is the day salvation comes to your house, that this is the day that you're going to be like Zacchaeus up in a tree when Jesus walked by and Jesus looked up in the tree and said, come down, Zacchaeus, this day salvation has come to your house. This day salvation has come to your house. I will never forget the day when I was like Zacchaeus up in the tree and Jesus said to me, Leroy, this day, this day, I save you. I give you the gift of salvation and I praise God. And God is no respecter of persons. He wants all of you to be saved. He wants, he loves a backslider. He wants you to come back to him. He loves everyone, no matter what you have done. He loves you. That's why Jesus hung on the cross to take away your sins and mine. And there is nothing he will not give you or hold back from you. But first you must receive him as your savior and your Lord. So thank you. Thank you, God, for so great a salvation. And it all began, it all began when the prophets prophesied that uh, he will be born of a virgin. He will be born in Bethlehem and he will come and save his people from their sins. God sent the prophecy. But the story actually began long before that. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God, and the word was God. Isn't this beautiful? God so orchestrated life, so laid out this universe, so laid out our life for us that he, even before we were born, before we were created, he had a plan for us, our salvation. He knew that we will be plagued and endangered and, and captivated by sin. He knew that the devil would have us all in his camp. He knew that we would all be political prisoners and saved and slaves. But God also knew that he would deliver us through his son, Jesus Christ. So even before God created the heaven and the earth, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, was slain before the foundation of the world. That's what the Bible teaches us. He was slain before the foundation of the world. Why? So that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. And so we thank God. Salvation is free. That's what Christmas is all about. Christmas, Christ's birthday, Christmas, Christ's birthday. Celebrate Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, we hear people talking about the spirit of Christmas. There is no spirit of Christmas. The spirit of Christmas means go to Macy's, go to Walmart, get online, uh, go to Amazon.com, order something, send your packages, uh, FedEx or UPS. That's the Christmas spirit. But ladies and gentlemen, we worship the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is the reason for the season. His name is Jesus. He's the reason for the season. He's not the man upstairs. He's not my big brother upstairs. His name is Jesus. And so we honor him. We worship him. We, we respect him. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming into the world. Thank you that you did not count it robbery to leave glory and to come to earth to be with us. The scripture says, and he dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Ladies and gentlemen, God loves you so much that he does not want you to perish, and he has made the way plain for you to be saved, set free, that you will not have to go into eternal death, into the lake of fire. He loves you so much. He's knocking on everybody's door trying to get you to accept his gift to the world, Jesus Christ, who was born on the day we celebrate as Christmas Day. God came from glory, ladies and gentlemen. God who created everything. He came down from glory and he entered into this world 
to save us. And so we thank God. We bless God. We praise God. Oh, I feel good down in my sanctified soul. I praise God. Tammy Nichols, we greet you in the name of Jesus. Linda Barrett, we greet you in the name of Jesus. Bishop Elijah, we greet you in all of Kenya in the name of Jesus. Bishop Davis, we greet you in all of Jamaica in the name of Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, the cure for depression during the holiday season is Jesus. Don't let this world system mess up your mind. Don't let them steal your joy. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus. You may not have $5 in your piggy bank. You may not have $2 in your wallet. But if you've got Jesus, you are rich, ladies and gentlemen. If you've got Jesus, you're rich, ladies and gentlemen. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. He's enough. He's enough. He will supply all of our needs according to our riches and glory. So keep your mind fixed on Jesus. Don't get caught up in this holiday hype because the hype will be gone in a couple of days. Ladies and gentlemen, the hype, all these phony greetings people give you, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Ladies and gentlemen, for some people, it's just a shibboleth. What's a shibboleth? A statement, an expression of words, words that don't mean anything. Most people going around are saying Merry Christmas don't really mean it because that's all they know. But ladies and gentlemen, we worship God. We worship God. We set this day aside to celebrate his birth, that God loved us so much that he left heaven to come into the world as a little child and to live with us for 33 years and then to die a gruesome death on the cross so that we might have the right to eternal life. And so I encourage you today, if you're not saved, get saved. This is not an option. It's not something you should put off until tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised. The scripture says, this day, if you hear my voice, do not harden your hearts as your fathers did in the wilderness, but receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Tomorrow's not promised. Some of you are putting off until tomorrow, to next year, until you turn 30, until you retire, until you get your social security check, you're putting it off. And then you say, when I get all this, when I retire from my job, when I get my new home, then I'm gonna give my life to Jesus. Come on, people, stop playing with God. God can cut you off in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, but praise God for his grace and mercy that he gives us all a chance, a second chance, a third and a fourth. But he says he will not always tarry with man. He will not always strive with mankind. So this day, today, today, give yourself the best gift you could ever get. It's better than a new car. It's better than a new house. It's better than a job promotion. It's better than a salary increase. It's better than hitting the lotto. Give yourself the gift of eternal life. Make sure that your soul is saved and that you have life eternal. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the best thing you can do for yourself. And it's the best thing that you can do for anyone else is to lead them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, then worship God with all your heart. Worship God with all your heart. Get prepared, ladies and gentlemen, because we're facing some difficult times ahead. They are difficult times that are coming. I see them over the horizon. God is sending prophets. He's sending his word, and he wants you to get right now. Dig in. Dig in. Surround yourself with Jesus. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Get prepared, because the day is coming when a lot of people will not be able to stand. All these powerful politicians uh, uh, who are big people in their political party, they're uh, pushing their clout and touting their esteem and boasting on themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, when the hard times come, they won't have a leg to stand on 
It's only Christ Jesus. You might be a Democrat. You might be a Republican. You might be a part in Kenya of the Odinga party or the opposite party. You may be uh, on the side of the prime minister in Jamaica. But when the tough times come, if you don't have Christ, you will not be able to stand. Mama can't help you. Daddy can't help you. Great grandmama can't help you. Your friends can't help you. Your bank account can't help you. Your empire can't help you. It's only Jesus Christ. So ladies and gentlemen, get saved today. Give yourself a Christmas present. Receive Christ. Receive Christ. Put Christ back in Christmas and put Christ in your heart and then you'll be able to stand like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in his season the winds are going to blow against you but if you're rooted in christ jesus you'll be able to stand ladies and gentlemen we are looking at some tough times coming we're looking at some tough times coming and we want to be ready we want to be ready. So give your heart to Jesus and trust in him. Amen. Praise God. Well, that was a long welcome to the Back to Basics online church. We're only online for about 45 minutes on Sunday mornings. And we're here to tell you that Jesus Christ loves you. He is Lord. He is still in charge. He will never yield his kingdom. He will not usurp his kingdom. He will not uh, uh, take what you've given to him and run off and start another kingdom. He's here for you. He's here for you. And he's here for the long run. He is king of kings. He is Lord of lords. Praise God. So we want to just open the uh, phone lines right now and ask you to unmute your phone. If you have a prayer request, unmute your phone. Or if you have in the chat room, just type your request in the chat window, and then we want to pray for you. So let's take a moment. Uh, those of you who are listening uh, to the video, then we ask that you take time and make your request known to God. Tell God what your situation is and ask him. And we believe uh, that as we pray today, God will cover your situation. So oh, unmute your phone if you feel led or in uh the chat window. Here's uh, one of our sisters praying that her father gets saved. Uh, I stand with you, uh, Tammy. I stand with you that your father gets saved. Praise God. Praise God. And the other uh, in the chat room, we're going to lift up um, our friends Sylvia and Vernon Curtis in Knox, Indiana. They were in a car wreck this morning on their way to church. So we're believing God to protect them, heal them, and deliver them. They were on their way to church. They were on their way to worship with Pastor Paul Begley in Knox, Indiana, and they got broadsided in a car wreck. You know, Satan is out to try to destroy, but he can't, he can't take us out. He can't take us out. Still we stand, still we rise, because Christ rose from the dead, and God lives in us, and hallelujah, thank God for the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Thank God that he has assigned angels to protect each and every one of us. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And we lift up people all over the world. We pray for salvation and deliverance and healing for people all over the world. We pray for sinners that they will be saved. We pray for those who are ignorant of you, who don't know you, who've not heard the gospel, that they will hear the gospel, that preachers will go to them, that they will hear the gospel and be saved. We pray for the listeners who are listening via this tape, that they will receive Jesus Christ as Lord. We pray for the sick wherever they are. We stretch out our hands upon them in the name of Jesus. And ask that you stretch out your mighty hand, Holy Spirit, and heal and deliver. We lift up Tammy, God. We pray that her father will be saved. Lord, save her father. It is so important, God, that her father be saved. Lord, we lift up our loved ones, our friends, even our enemies 
anyone who's not saved, we pray that they will hear the gospel, that they will turn their hearts to you, and that they will seek your face and be saved. And then, Father, we pray that you'll meet every need of all the people within the sound of my voice. Meet every need. We cast every care unto you. We put our trust in you, Lord God, and we ask that you move by your spirit. And then, Father, we thank you. We praise you. We bless you. We thank you, Lord. We honor you, Lord God. We bless you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a church in the house. We have a church in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, some people need to come on the uh, online church. Amen. Jesus is here. He's real. He's here. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a church up in here. As they say down here in Georgia, we have a church up in here. Amen. And church means it's not a performance. It's honoring God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. And as we honor him, he moves. He moves. He does exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. It's not how hard we preach. It's not how eloquent or articulate our words are. It's not how many syllables we use. It's not the singing we do. It's not any kind of performance. It's all about Jesus, the son of the living God, born of the Virgin Mary, born in a manger, crucified on Calvary, risen from the dead. Death could not hold him. The grave could not keep him. And he ascended into heaven where he sits now on the right hand of the throne of God, making intercession for us. He's praying for us right now. And he has the confidence. He has the confidence that the Holy Ghost, who is God himself, whom Christ has sent, is going to complete the work. So it's not our singing. It ain't our preaching. It's the Holy Spirit. So honor the Holy Spirit. Obey the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit have his way. Praise God. You preach the gospel. You share a witness. You pray and trust that when you preach, the Holy Ghost will do his work. When you sing, the Holy Ghost will do his work. When you pray, the Holy Spirit will do his work. And so we honor you, Holy Spirit. You are God. You are God in us. You are the creator of the whole world. And our trust is in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no other religion, no other religion on this planet that has the Holy Ghost. It's Christianity. It's Christians, Christ in us, the hope of glory. You can be the best Buddhist in the world. I mean, you can chant, you can sell chant CDs. You can sway the world with your chanting, but there's no life in the chant. There's only life in Christ Jesus. You can be the best Muslim in the world. You can be the best Muslim in the world. You can say a, a salam alaikum, alaikum salam. You can say alhamdulillah. You can have all the verbiage. You can say all those things. You can dress. You can put on the appearance. But if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, you're dead. You're dead. You're sounding brass. You're a whitewashed sepulcher. Your dry bones. You need the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost will not enter into anyone who does not worship Jesus Christ as the Son of God who died on the cross, was resurrected, and is soon to come again. Ladies and gentlemen, all these other religions, no matter how articulate they may be, no matter how well, how beautiful they may appear, how attractive they are, no matter what they have to offer, none can give you life. You must be born again. I say, ladies and gentlemen, you must be born again. Well, Pastor Carter, they say in this country, we have freedom of religion. Yes, that was the biggest mistake they ever put in, 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 the, in, in the mouths of the founding fathers of this nation. The dumbest thing they ever put in their mouth was freedom of religion. No, that wasn't the dumbest. That was the second dumbest. The dumbest thing was they allowed 
the Supreme Court justices to interpret that to mean that you can worship anything in this country that you please. You're free to choose your own God. That is a lie straight from the pit of hell. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why this nation is so messed up. Because the founding fathers, as religious as many of us think they were, they did not have their eyes on the Lord God. They left the door wide open so the people can worship trees, bricks, stones, monuments, and anything else. And then they built the Constitution to support people's belief in whatever they believe in. And that is not biblical. That is not Christian. That is not of God. And that is why God is trying so much to get to the hearts of the people of this nation and so many nations that have patterned their governments after the United States. God delivered his people from Egypt so that they can worship him. God told Moses, meet me at Mount Sinai where I will speak to the people. God's intent was to bring the slaves out of Egypt, meet them at Mount Sinai, and introduce himself to them. I am the Lord, your God. God did not tell them anything about freedom of religion. This thing is so messed up in this nation and in so many nations. And people believe the stuff. We're taught this garbage in first grade, in kindergarten. They believe this stuff, freedom of religion. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to be free, receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's freedom. The scripture says you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. I wonder, can I get a witness from anybody out there in the chat window? Anybody out there uh, in, in, in uh, Kenya? Anybody in Jamaica? Anybody in North America? Uh, Memo, hit me up from Belgium. John and Emily, hit me up from Paris, France. Praise God. And let's affirm the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's affirm him. Jesus is Lord. No matter what these governments are saying and doing, Jesus is Lord. And when the deal goes down, ladies and gentlemen, when we got a witness in Chester, Pennsylvania, hallelujah, and when the deal goes down, ladies and gentlemen, and when the dust is settled, a lot of governments that thought they were bad, North Korea, Russia, even Israel, even the United States, when the dust is settled, only those who have called upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So we say this to you. We preach Christ Jesus buried and risen from the dead. We preach Christ Jesus, the son of the living God, as the Savior, the only Savior. Well, Pastor Carter, all roads lead to heaven. No, they don't. No, they don't. That's a lie. And whoever told you that is a liar. If your mama told you that, your mama is a liar. If your daddy told you that, your daddy is a liar. All roads do not lead to heaven. The scripture says, straight is the way that leads to life. Many roads lead to death, ladies and gentlemen. Wide is the road that leads to destruction. But straight is the road that leads to death. Well, Pastor Carter, you talking about my mama. You're talking about my daddy. No, I'm not talking about your mama or your daddy. But if your mama and daddy were not saved, if they're still alive, you need to get them saved. But if they're not, we just move on. Ladies and gentlemen, we just move on. I ain't got time to worry about my deceased loved ones who did not serve the Lord. Why waste my time worrying about where my deceased loved ones are when I know in my heart they did not worship God. They're in hell. There's nothing we can do. Well, you can pray in the out of purgatory like they do in the Catholic church. No, that's a lie. It's a lie that the Catholics made up just to get your money. You can't buy them out of purgatory because the scripture teaches us 
If you don't receive Jesus while there's breath in your life, there is no way that you're going to be saved. There is no way that you're going to be saved. Praise God. We got a message here from Sylvia and Vernon. Their car was uh, in a ditch in Indiana. They were towed out of that ditch and they're on their way home. And so we thank God for helping them, sparing their lives. Thank you, Lord. Now restore what they've lost, God, in Jesus' name. Well, bless God for the next 10 minutes. Give me 10 more minutes. We're going to look at our scripture. We're going to look at our scriptures. And the scripture teaches us from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. The scripture teaches us this message. Wise men still seek Jesus. That's our subject for the day. Wise men and women too, because I know we have a lot of women online. Well, don't forget us. Don't be don't be chauvinist, Pastor Carter. Wise men and women still seek Jesus. Let's look at Matthew chapter 2 or download Matthew chapter 2 and look at the first 12 verses. Father, we thank you for your word. Let your word bring forth much fruit, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Our subject today is wise men and women still seek Jesus. Wise men and women still seek Jesus. We just read from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, and we take a look at the Magi, or in the Greek language in which the New Testament was originally written. The Greek language uses the term magoi, M-A-G-O-I. It's plural. It's a plural term, magoi, and it refers to a hereditary priestly caste. In other words, these men, the Magi, were born into the office of being magis. It, it was it, magoi or magis. It was a hereditary office. They um, studied prophecy. They explained prophecy. They explained omens. They looked at signs in the heavens. They were astrologers. They were astronomers. They studied the planets and the formation of the planets. They studied the stars. They followed star formations. They practiced divination, and they, in this sense, a group of them had a heart for seeking Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, 
we're looking at men, astronomers, astrologers, wise men, prophets from other religions, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to this. These were not Christians. These were not Christians following the star. They were from Babylon and countries east of Israel. They came from up to 800 miles away following a star. Ladies and gentlemen, these are men who for years have been trained in following star formations and astronomical phenomenon, and they follow this star. They saw a certain formation of stars in the sky. They saw this bright star. They followed this bright star, and they made up their minds. We're going to find out what this star is all about. And these Magi, the Magi, they studied, they studied, and they uh, came to the conclusion of what the world realized at that time. And this is substantiated by the Roman historian Tacitus and the Roman historian Suetonius. And it's substantiated by others like Josephus, who were first century writers, historians, observers of the times. And they all came to the understanding that there was a great expectation of a king to be born in Judea. Ladies and gentlemen, these men had studied and, and they joined with people throughout the then known world, intellectuals, astronomers, scientists, and they came to the conclusion and they looked at old prophecies, not, not just biblical prophecies, but prophecies from some of the other books that existed at the time. And they came to the conclusion that a king would be born in Judea and this king would rule the world. And so they gather themselves to make the journey, to make the trek to wherever that star was leading. Ladies and gentlemen, this is faith. This is faith. They decided to follow that star. Let that star lead them to this king. They had the confidence, ladies and gentlemen, that they would find the king, the Christ, the Messiah, the Mashiach, the anointed one whom the scriptures had prophesied would be born. They knew about uh, the prophets. They knew about uh, he would be born in Bethlehem of, of Judea. They knew that he would be born of a virgin, and they made up their minds they were going to find him. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about people over 2,000 years ago who put everything else on hold to seek the Savior, to seek the Messiah. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder how many people today, how many of you listeners are willing to put everything on hold, everything you're all about, your reputation, everything you are, to put it on hold and seek the Lord with all your heart. How many, how many, I wonder how many of you are really seeking the Lord today. I, I know there are a lot of you who, who go to church. Churches are packed with people, especially uh, this time of the year. Uh, we call them CMEs, uh, Christ, uh, Christmas, uh, Mother's Day, and Easter. Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. You can find churches packed with people. They dress up, they look good, and they're in church. And they want to know how many people knew I'm in, I was in church today. They want to know. But ladies and gentlemen, that is not seeking Jesus. That is seeking to be seen in church. I wonder how many of you listening today are willing to put your life online and everything that you are, everything you have accomplished, everything that you are, and say, I'm going to seek Jesus like these magi did. Ladies and gentlemen, if everybody in this nation would make that decision, we would have a nation that would be flipped upside down, upright. If everybody in your country would stop and say, I'm going to stop what I'm doing. I'm going to get out of this thing I'm doing. I'm going to disassociate myself from this movement. I'm going to stop doing that. And I'm going to seek the Lord Jesus Christ with all my heart. 
ladies and gentlemen, we would have a beautiful world. We would not need any more denominations in the churches. We wouldn't even need the online church. We wouldn't even need the buildings that people are spending millions of dollars, billions of dollars to build these great crystal cathedrals, these beautiful places to demonstrate that they're religious. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord wants us to seek him with all our heart. Seek me, he says, and you will find me. It's not in buildings. It's not in jobs. It's not in empires. It's not in governments. It's not in politics. It's seeking the Lord with all your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, these wise men had more sense. I'm going to say it. They had more sense than most people I know. They have more sense than most people I have met in this life. Because most people I've met in this life don't care about Jesus until they're in trouble. And then when they get in trouble, they expect God to stop what he's doing, stop running the universe, and run to their beck and call and rescue them. And then after God rescues them, they go off on their own way. They forget about Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about serious times. We're talking about Jesus about to come again for those who have sought him and have found him. But he's still opening the window. There's a window for those who have not seriously sought him with their whole heart. Ladies and gentlemen, most people don't believe that there's going to be eternal death in a lake of fire. They don't believe that a good God would cast them into the lake of fire. And so they live any way they want. And there are people who believe that just before they die, God's going to give them a chance to get saved. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to wake up and smell the coffee. You need to wake up and smell the coffee. Oh, that was a good sip of Folgers right there. Wake up, people! And so the wise men and the historians back us up. They follow this star because there was a worldwide belief. We're not talking about doubt and unbelief. There was a worldwide belief that a savior would be born. The problem is the world did not want him to be born. King Herod did not want him to be born. The politicians did not want him to be born because if Jesus is born, then that means Herod is not the king who he thinks he is. Herod thought he was divine. He thought he was divinely ordained by God to be king forever. And so if Jesus is born, then a lot of kahunas and kings and gods and demigods and semi-gods and people who thought they were something more than what they were would have to realize they weren't anything compared to Jesus. And I wrote a book called The Giants Are Back. The Giants Are Back. You can get a copy if you uh, send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com. I'll send you a copy. The Giants Are Back. And it's all about all of Satan's attempts to prevent Jesus Christ from being born in Bethlehem. All of Satan's efforts, historically, ladies and gentlemen, all of Satan's efforts to prevent Jesus from being born of the seed of a woman. Born of a woman as the seed of a woman. And the giants are back. It's all about what Satan is doing now to prevent people from receiving Jesus as Lord. And his activity is heavy. So if you want a copy of that, you get in touch with me. So the world expected a king. That does not mean that the world was willing to worship that king. They expected a king. And out, out of all those people who had information to that knowledge that a king would be born in Judea and he would rule the whole world, a handful of them called Magi or Magoi left Babylon following a star to find Jesus. 
There were more than three. Tradition teaches us they were three. They even gave them names, made one black, one Asian, one white. Come on, y'all. They were magi. They were not kings. They were uh, astronomers, astrologers, wise people, prophets from their religions. And the beautiful thing is here's a lesson a lot of us need to get. Some of you wrapped up in these dead religions, you're going to die in this religion unless you get saved. These men had the guts and the courage and the sense to get out of that religion and receive Jesus Christ. They sought him with their whole heart and they found him and they came to Jerusalem. When Herod heard they were in Jerusalem, he sent for them because Herod was upset. Herod said, hey, if there's another king going to be born, I got to kill that guy, whoever he is, because I'm the king. Ladies and gentlemen, it reminds me so much of these politicians we have in office today, these kahunas. They want to perpetuate themselves and their lives of their friends, and they don't care who they step on. They, they claim they love this nation, but they really don't care. They want to perpetuate themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be a day of awakening, a day of reckoning in our nation and yours too. And everybody's going to realize that Jesus is Lord. How sad it's going to be when men and women wake up and say, wow, I spent my whole life building my own kingdom, my own empire, only to wind up perishing in these eternal flames. People are going to cry, going to tear their hair out, gnash at the teeth and say, I wish I had believed the preacher. I wish I had believed the scriptures. I wish I had received Jesus Christ as Lord, but then it'll be too late. But thank God the wise men had the sense, the courage, the conviction, and they were led by a star. Actually, ladies and gentlemen, as a witness to the birth of Jesus, they were led by the Holy Spirit to Bethlehem. When they got to Jerusalem, Herod said, oh, when did you first see the star? Oh, oh, where is this child? Oh, find him. And when you find him, send me word because I want to worship him also. He was a lying dog. Herod was a lying dog. He had no inclination whatsoever. I started to use the word proclivity. He had no inclination at all to worship Jesus. He wanted to kill him, get rid of him. And politicians today, leaders today will kill you, will get rid of you. They get rid of anyone who's a threat to their kingdom, but they can't kill Jesus. And they cannot kill Christ in you. They can destroy the body, but they cannot destroy the Holy Ghost on the inside of us. That's why we preach boldly Christ, Jesus, crucified, buried, risen, risen from the dead and soon to be back again with us, coming for us. And so when the wise men left Herod's palace, the star appeared again and led them to where Jesus was. And ladies and gentlemen, they did not find a babe in a manger. The scripture, the original uh, Greek text says they found a pace, a pace, P-A-I-S, a pace. And the word pace is interpreted as child, as compared to the word when we look at the shepherds going into Bethlehem on the night that Jesus was born, the shepherds found a brephos, B-R-E, P-H-O-S. There's a difference between a paeus and a brephos. A paeus is a child. A brephos is a newborn babe. The wise men, the magoi, the magi did not find a newborn babe, but they found a child nearly two years old, living not in a manger, not in a stable, but in a house. The Bible says he lived in a house with his parents. He was nearly two years old, and they worshiped him. Ladies and gentlemen, we see these forerunners of, of the Muslims, the Sikhs, the Hindus, the agnostics. We see them bowing before Jesus Christ, which is a type of what is going to happen in this world. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ 
is Lord. So if you're not a Christian, you need to come on board. You need to renounce that false religion that has you captivated. You need to renounce it. You need to repent. You need to say, I need Jesus Christ as Lord of my life. And if you're in a, here in America and you're not saved and you've been uh, spending your whole life following your political party uh, or uh, going line dancing or or uh, drinking coffee at Starbucks, or Starbucks or whatever you do on Sunday morning, you need to repent and seek the Lord Jesus Christ and turn your life over to the Lord and be saved because the time is coming and it's coming soon, ladies and gentlemen, where there will be no more room for repentance. No more room for repentance. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about unless people get saved and get saved quickly, we're talking about millions of people, many whom we know who will not make it in because they're stubborn, they're stiff necked, they're full of unbelief, they do not believe. Ladies and gentlemen, I beg you, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask him to come into your life and save you. When Herod uh, found out that the wise men did not obey his instructions because the Lord appeared to them in a dream and said, don't return to Herod, but go back to your country this way. When Herod found out about that, he was wroth. He was mad. He ordered all the babies in a 10 mile radius around Jerusalem to be put to death. All babies up to all males up to two years old to be put to death. That's how scared he was that a king was coming. Ladies and gentlemen, a king is coming. His name is Jesus. You cannot stop him from coming. You need to join his kingdom. You can't get there by joining the church. You must be born into his kingdom. Well, what must I do to be saved, preacher? The scripture says that if thou will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Let's pray right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for how the wise men sought after you to worship you. Now, Lord, we believe there are still multitudes of people who have not accepted Jesus as Savior. And Lord, many are trapped in dead religions. Many are trapped in tradition. Lord, give them a breakthrough. Help them to seek the Lord Jesus Christ and to believe with their heart that he's your son. He died on the cross, was risen from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is soon to come back. Lord, help people to be saved today. Save them, Holy Spirit. We commit this message to you, Lord God. Let your word not return unto you void or empty. In Jesus' name, we praise God. We thank you. Well, praise God, my friends. If you've gotten saved, get in touch with me. Let me know. Let me know. Um, let me know what this message has meant to you. Let me know what it has done for you. We praise God. I see where our Facebook family was cut off a long time ago during this message. So we put the video up on Facebook. And um, we want to thank God for all of you. Amen. We're going to stop.